This is Tasha Blasi, Integrative Fertility Consultant, Patient Advocate, and Founder of the Fertilitites Unite Project, or FU Project for short. On this podcast, you will be gifted clinically-based fertility advice gathered from case studies around the world since 2016, inspiring and educational content from leading holistic health and fertility experts, and some of my most colorful experiences that I had in my 10 rounds of IVF, pregnancy, and motherhood. This is the FU Project. Fertilitites unite. Mama, stop doing things for your fertility journey. Okay? I know. Yeah, I'm a fertility consultant and all I do is give advice. Stop doing things for your fertility journey. Start doing things that heal you at the cellular level. I wanted to do this talk with one of my current clients, Corinne. She actually asked me to do this talk. She didn't sign up for the program for herself, please. Nobody does. But she really embodied because she is not successful yet, what it truly means to do things that heal you at the cellular level. Declutter mentally, declutter physically, rebalance your hormones and watch everything get better and easier and fall into place. She talks about feeling lighter. She talks about her how her relationship with her husband has improved. She even talks about how she knows how her life has changed for the good and how motherhood for her will be so much different this time. I am excited to introduce to you, Corinne, so that somebody else can preach to you how your fertility will follow. I love Corinne. I'm so excited that we are doing this. Thank you. You you brought this up to me. We you brought this up to me and I was so excited to do this with you because so much of what I preach, you know, I do the live 360 IVF success and I talk about this in the program. I talk about this and you are really the you've done this and you've lived this and and that's why I'm just so excited for you to share this, which is finding full success and wellness, and happiness in your life, in your fertility journey, before that other soul has showed up, right? And and embracing really what that means. And so thank you for suggesting we do this. And I just know that you're going to inspire so many women who are like us. We're in fertility jail, doing way too much for their fertility treatments, instead of focusing on things that will actually help their fertility just dramatically improve. So thank you for being here. Great. Well, thanks for having me. And and yeah, I wanted to to just share more about what this program has done for me. And, you know, I know women like I was just super anxious and questioning every single thing that you're, every decision you're making, what doctor should I go to? Is this the right protocol? My friend who's also doing it, they're doing this. Why aren't I doing that? Is that better? Um, just everything. You know, I read a book and then I'm terrified to touch plastic. And I mean, just <laughs> everything. I have no idea what to eat. What's the best diet, you know? And doctors giving you all different um, different recommendations that all kind of, you know, contradict each other. So you just, I just didn't know what to do. And I was kind of paralyzed. Until really I, I, you know, joined this program and then it became so much more clear and I wanted to share that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not pregnant yet, but I, it is inevitable that I will be. And so I'm just excited to share kind of what this program um, has done for me. Thanks. And, and really it's, I, I just, thank you, right? The, the program is a guide. It's really what you have chosen to do right? It's really, it's really how you've embraced things, what you've chosen to do, how you've used the resources. So I, I don't want this to be about the program as much as I want to just honor you for all that you've done because, because yeah, I mean, we, I'm so glad that, and and we'll talk about it. I'm so glad that you feel like everything was there for you, the people, the guides, the experts, but really, really take into account that this is you. Right. And that's where when people join the program, I'm always like, 
I'm going to guide you and tell you what to do. And there are experts in everything, but those people that really take it as I am doing this and I need a guide. I need, I need my questions answered. I need to know what to do. But those that are really taking it as like, I got this because I know exactly what to ask and do. Um, and when I don't, I have people that can help me. And, and the most important part, which nobody actually does this when they start working with us, but, and I'm doing this for me because I know my fertility will follow, but that's something I always put in. Nobody actually does. This. <laughs> nobody hires me going, gosh, I just need, <laughs> I need a consultant. Uh, but why don't you just get started with yeah. What are some things like you talked about your anxiety? I definitely have anxiety as well. Um, how, what was that like before and, and how has that changed? So I've always kind of struggled with anxiety. I mean, I've had different phases in my life where it was, it was better or worse for, you know, kind of things in my environment that were happening. Um, but then I, I do have a son, I have a, an almost four-year-old now too. So um, I had a very hard pregnancy with him and my anxiety just kind of went through the roof, starting with him and then having a baby and like, oh my gosh, just like the, the thoughts, the dark thoughts that I was having um, and just the scary, like the worst case scenario all the time, constantly racing through my head in every scenario. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And, and at the time I was, I was so concerned that I thought I was like, oh my gosh, is this postpartum depression? Is this, you know, what's wrong with me? Why am I having these thoughts? And you know, kind of later and reading some books and kind of talking to more people, I was like, oh, that's all normal. Okay. So that helped me a little bit, but it didn't stop the, those thoughts from, from coming. Um, so just an example of, of that is, you know, you going through the program and learning some of the techniques, you know, now I, one, I don't have nearly as many of those, those thoughts anymore. Like I, I just don't. Um, so it's amazing. I never thought I would get to that point. Um, but then also whenever one does come in, I know how to deal with it and mm-hmm. I know how to acknowledge it and say like, okay, I stop myself from the spiral of negative, horrible, ridiculous thoughts. Um, and then I'm able to kind of say like, okay, I'm having this thought because I have so much love for my son or I have, you know, I have so much love and, and, you know, all the reasons of why I'm thinking that I have so much to lose. And then I'm able to, you know, the reason I'm having this is because of love. I have so much love to give and I have so much to lose. And that's why I'm having this, not because anything is true or not because of anything like that. And then I'm able to just let it go. And I'm like, huh, wow, that, that really worked. Um, So anyway, like just, I've been able to deal with so many of those, you know, those, those much less negative thoughts now by just using the techniques that I thought. Um, and it has been incredibly helpful, um, in so many ways. Yeah. You know, and also- I'm sure that, and, and I want to, I would do want to stop there because I think that what you brought up is so important, but I'm also sure that like, because you're not, these dark thoughts will come up, right. Stresses will come up. Traumas will continue to happen to us, but it's that recovery phase. I'm sure that that has affected so much with your health and wellness and, beyond like the ripple effect of it, I'm sure is incredible. Cause I know for me, it has been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just not having that constant stress just living in that world where you're worried about the worst case is going to happen in every mm-hmm. possible scenario mm-hmm. being like, you know, now being able to be like, eh, you know, yes, it's a risk, but it's probably not going to happen. You know, where before I was like, oh my gosh, it is absolutely going to happen. But now I don't have that fear. And it's just like, I feel lighter. Um, And yeah, everything is so much better. I mean, it's not just the anxiety. um, It's just so many more things that are, that are better in my life too. I mean, my husband has actually said, um, it's like, wow, what this, this is, I like this, this, (laughs) this is uh I really like this. You, I, I mean, he's noticed how much happier I am. Um, our relationship has been so much better. Um, just this, this summer we, um, we were on a trip, we were visiting family and we actually got a date night. So we had babysitting. Um, and I was honestly kind of, this was kind of before I started this program, I was actually concerned about like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to talk about? Does my husband even like me anymore? Mm. Want to be around me? And, 
want, will we have anything to talk about? You know, and I was just, I was actually concerned about that. And then, um, and it was okay, but we kind of struggled through it. And then once I started this, this program and kind of doing all this thing, all these, these steps and all this mindset work, and I'm so much happier. And like, we're, we're just, we're just happy. We're so much more playful. We joke around all the time. Like we used to, like we just do silly dance. I mean, it's it's just fun again. Mm -hmm. And it's back to, I mean, not quite to where we, where we started because we have a four-year-old who ruins a lot of things, to be honest. (laughs) Um, but, um, but yeah, we're just so much happier. The sex is better. I mean, everything. So I know as soon as you're like my husband's so much happier, I'm like, he's definitely getting laid. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, (laughs) clearly. Clearly, you know, so, um, but I'm, it's more fun for me actually too, (laughs) which makes it better for him as well. Um, so, so yeah, it's just so many, so many things have just improved and it's, it's weird. Like I kind of, so I'm, I'm have never been a uh, super emotional person. And I'm, even when I like write or tell my thoughts are, are very much like to the point, like, Mm -hmm. like, like an instruction manual, like, Step one, do this. Step yeah. one. And you're, you're, you're a project this. manager at heart. like Right, exactly. Yeah. I'm an engineer and project manager, and I am very literal and to the point. And so all of a sudden, like, I'm having to think through my emotions, and I'm actually more aware of my emotions. Mm. And and um, I told Stephanie, my, um, my coach, whenever I first started going through this program and asked these questions, and I'm like, I don't even know how to think about this stuff. Like, I don't even know what this stuff means. I don't even know how to answer this question. And then a few weeks later, I kind of kept going through it. And I was like, oh, okay, I can answer these questions now. I know how to do this. And so I'm just so much more aware of how I'm feeling about things and can kind of describe things a little bit better and um, just just be aware and how I'm feeling and then how to be able to deal with it in the moment, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, because what right? Secondary fertility issues, a lot of anxiety, a lot of dark thoughts. I I had the same thing all through my, my pregnancies. And then especially like, I always tell people, if you think your anxieties and fears are because you're not going to have a child, (laughs) just wait until you do, they get so much worse. You have to take care of this stuff now, because what this is, is buildup of clutter, whether it's traumas, minute or major, and it's how your body processes it. You got to figure this out now. It only gets so much more intense. And then we grow older and then our bodies can't recover like we used to in our twenties and thirties. Um, for Absolutely. me, I used to have these, you know, really dark thoughts, like at night, all these, what ifs, what ifs. And it, and, and it really, I felt out of control. You know, so when we talk about so badly wanting to control things in our lives, one, it's really great to understand what you can control and what you can't. I always talk about that, but, but not being in control of your mind and well, not, excuse me, not, not thinking you have control over your thoughts and really not being in control of that downward spiral. Oh, Mm -hmm. I remember so much. I mean, I spent most of until I was 40 like that, right? Mila was born when I was like 40. So I just know that when we can do these things for ourselves, so many other things fall into place, especially our health, our wellness, and motherhood, pregnancy, fertility just gets so much better. And that's really like, if I could just scream that, I want everyone to realize that we're not taking care of ourselves. And what that comes down to, I think, I would love your opinion, is that unconditional love piece. We haven't been taught to love ourselves, especially as women, how to receive. We've been taught very well how to give. We have not been taught how to receive. Um, and, And that's, that needs a change. Yeah, absolutely. And that's even um, a topic that I, that I worked with Stephanie on as well about, you know, loving yourself. And I, and I remember asking him like, I don't even know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where to start, right? you know, with that. And so she's kind of helped me and I still have a long way to go in that. So do I, Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) but you know, but kind of constant reminders about 
you know, about different things. And, and, um, and it's really been, it's really been great. And just, she, she helped, she's helped me kind of remind me of the tools that I already have that I already know how to do. I just, you know, maybe I'm not using them right or, or not recognizing some of the things that I'm doing as to what they are. Um, so, so anyway, that's, that's, um, it's been great to kind of, whenever I need kind of a, a pick me up or just kind of, um, you know, so just, just along the way, you know, I've, I've met with her and she's, you know, just kind of helped, helped walk me through things and kind of clarified things for me to help, help me organize what I'm thinking and feeling and how I can better love myself and better love my family and better love everyone and share my abundance of love that I have. Um, because I didn't know what that looked like, you know, right. and that's definitely more clear, but still something I'm working on, of course. Always, always. So, so what does that mean to love yourself? What does that look like for you? What are some things that you could tell somebody else if, cause I, I was the same way, like, when I started doing all this research, right? Cause that's all I do. I just research, gather data, learn, 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 and then, and then put it in a cute package and, and teach. I was like, what, what does that mean to love myself? You know, do you want to get deep? What does that mean to you to love yourself? Well, you know that I'm not a very deep person. I'm getting a little <laughs> deeper, but uh, let's, let's just explain. <laughs> You're like, um, but here's a, here's a slideshow. <laughs> With bullets, go on. <laughs> yes. Um, so for me, it was it was realizing that I'm enough the way I am, Ooh. I guess. And that was one of the affirmations that I would tell myself, I'm enough. Um, this last year with COVID and um, multiple fertility failures and miscarriages and things like that, not to get into that, but I've put on some weight, definitely more than, than um, I would have liked. And I'm not happy with, with how my body looks right now, but being able to realize that it doesn't define me. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. I care much more about it than anyone else. It doesn't affect anything that, that, that I can do or, or how much I'm loved or how much I can love or anything like that. So, you know, accepting my body, that's always been a big one. I know that's always a big one for for women. Um, but also everything I'm doing, I don't have to be anyone that I'm not. I don't have to be a certain type of person for a friend or for anything really, I guess I am. If someone doesn't like me, that's fine. I am definitely a big people pleaser and always want everyone to like me, but you know what? It's okay. If they don't, if I'm being myself and genuine in who I am, that's who I am. And if they don't like that, then that's fine. And I probably don't like them either, to be honest, let's be honest mm-hmm. here. Um, so anyway, just kind of understanding that what I'm doing is good because it's me and I'm not trying to be someone else. I'm not trying to do something just because I think someone else will like that or whatever. Um, so anyway, I don't know if that. That totally does. I love that. And I'm guessing because we're so similar, um, but I'm guessing when you have those, let's say body images, you know, you know what you did look like or whatever. And, and you see something, I'm guessing the first instinct is "Uh," right. Oh, that's interesting. But then I'm guessing you could then quickly recover from that. Yes. Like my point is the, the feel like for me, the feeling of like, wow, that's a lot of bumps on my leg. You know, that doesn't go away. However, I'm quickly able to then recover from that instead of just being like, oh, and you, you know, you fucking ate this and you did that like, or you didn't do that. Like, you know what I mean? In the past, right? Like, well, of course you have those bumps. And then there's just heredity. And then it's like, oh my God. And then there's this person that doesn't have it, you know, yeah. where it's like, that's the tumbleweed effect that we're able to, we have those thoughts. I do, but it's like, huh. you know, my new favorite one is with uh, my body not new. It's, it's a little bit old, but I used to be like, like I'd look down and I'd be like, Oh, that's interesting. And then I go, well, good thing. I'm not a Victoria's secrets model and I'm just a fertility consultant. So moving on, you are strong. (laughs) These legs hold you. These legs are beautiful for these reasons. Yeah. So that's kind of, it's the recovery piece. It's not about it not happening It's recover, but then to your point, those thoughts don't come up as much. It's, it's because they don't get that energy. Yeah. 
right? What you focus on grows, what you focus on grows. So because you're not giving those wicked thoughts so much energy, they can't grow. Mm -hmm. So then they start being, they they start showing up as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's been kind of the, the most amazing things thing for me. And it's, and it's funny because, you know, I have some, I have my anxious girlfriends that um, we all talk about our anxiety and the crazy thoughts and just the ridiculousness of being a mom and all of that. And, you know, I've like shared with them that I'm like, you know what? I just, I don't have those thoughts. They're like, what? You don't (laughs) have those. I'm like, no, like I'm, I'm serious. Like I'm, I, I occasionally do, but I can like get rid of them. They're like, you can just stop them, you know? And so I've shared a little bit of, of, you know, some of the things I've learned and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So anyway, it's, it's, um, it's kind of cool to be the less anxious of my group of anxious mom friends. <laughs> you might get kicked out of the group. I know. I know I might. Anyway. I, yeah. Well, you know what? So, I, I think another great takeaway for anybody who is kind of like, what does that, how do you start this? What does that even mean? I, I find just awareness of our thoughts is key. Just that awareness piece, stopping that thought is, is, is really key. And if we can just get everybody to there to know this is a thought, it doesn't feel good. It's not real and it's not going to serve me. Again, that's not going to solve it, but that is such a big first step. Yeah, absolutely. And, and being um, reminded of my truths, you know, like, okay. And, and if I'm worried about something fertility wise, you know, uh, and I've been pretty good and p- pretty positive, but every once in a while I'll have a little, little dive or I'll start to, you know, be a, be a negative Nancy about things again. But then, um, you know, remembering that like, okay, my truths, I have good eggs. I can make embryos. I can get pregnant. It's, it's going to happen. All of those things are, are absolutely true. And so I can get rid of those kind of negative Nancy uh, moments about like, oh, it's never going to happen or, oh, I'm not sure if I can, you know. So it's just like remembering those truths, reminding myself that this is all that's truth. Everything else is just bullshit you made up in your head. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's true. That's what it is. Nothing. Predicting the future means nothing. It's not true. Nothing mm-hmm. is true. This is true. And you could just, just as easily, what if, what if I had twins? What if I had multiple kids? What if, you know, all these other good things, you know, could happen. So, you know, try to think about there's good what ifs as as well as, you know, bad what ifs as well. Mm -hmm. And, and, and how it makes you feel after you put energy towards both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And recognizing when I put so much energy towards a negative, which is so much easier, Mm -hmm. always so much easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And that's really what this rewiring of the brain is about to ultimately help balance our hormones at the, you know, cellular level, more energy. But yeah, it's, it's crazy how much more frequently we have those negative thoughts. But if you can take a beat and be aware of how you Mm -hmm. feel after those thoughts Mm -hmm. and think that that doesn't feel good, I I would prefer to feel good, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you go have a dance party. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and also being reminded of the, you choose, you know, you choose mm-hmm. how you're going to, re- how you're going to feel in this moment. You, you choose how to respond to this information. You choose how to react to that bad energy. You know, you can either suffer, you know, or you can not and, and change it. And so that's been helpful too. Sometimes it's harder. It takes a little longer to get there. You want to say all your kind of negative, um, crap first. And you're like, all right, it's out. Okay. Yeah. All right. I choose now, now I'm better. Now I'm going to be happy and see this as a moment to learn from. And, um, and yeah, just kind of move, move on. Yeah. And, and how would you, how would you define, um, what your fertility journey has taught you? Not, it's not, how would you define? I should just say, what has your extraordinary fertility journey for the second one, so much like mine, what has that taught you? Um, you know, to not have to have everything perfect and go exactly as planned. Mm. 
um, not have to control everything. And, you know, just like you, just like everyone else, you know, you wanted your kids to be this many years apart. So they would be best friends and like Mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and just everything was going to look like, and kind of just stopping that. And, and I know it's going to happen. And, um, I'm not a super religious or spiritual person though. I'm working on a little bit more of that too, but just knowing that it's going to happen, you know, I'm doing all the right things. It is, it is going to happen. I know that I am positive of that and just kind of letting go of the reins a little bit. Um, I mean, doing everything I can to do the right things and, but also about, you know, something else that is great about this program, um, is that it's not about being perfect. And that's great because I can't be perfect. I can't have a perfect diet. I can't do perfect routine. Like I I just can't that. And that's why I would fail at so many things and get frustrated with myself. You know, I would try Mm -hmm. to go on a certain diet or do this certain thing for, you know, every time, but it's not about that. It's actually, you know, don't be perfect. It's better if you're not absolutely perfect. And so just reminding myself that things aren't going to be perfect and it's maybe not how or, or when or whatever I imagined, but it's still, it's going to happen and it will be perfect when it does happen. I love that. Yes. I know people are so hard on themselves and it, it, nothing ever has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, I give the example of, I, I give so many examples of like this, this, yeah, nothing has to be perfect. Even your uterine, uterine lining, <laughs> measurement and especially your diet, which I know we all want to control the most because it's the easiest to control Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Although the the diet is something that has, was not easy for me to control before, but since actually meeting with with Brian and kind of talking through those things, and then also talking to um, Lauren about what my diet should be, I have, I have um, autoimmune thyroid issues. And so kind of understanding why and what I should be eating, it's made it so much easier and being able to have different targets of what I should eat. And anyway, it's been, it's been so much easier to follow this diet again, because I don't have to be perfect. And it's been, been really helpful, um, too. And I feel better, um, so far with the diet, I haven't necessarily felt better because of what I'm eating, but it feels good that I'm following it and that I'm doing the right things and, you know, feeding my body healthy foods and doing all these, all these things. So that definitely feels good too. I love that. Yeah. And, and hopefully, and again, you're learning techniques, not for your fertility, how you should eat because a thyroid is an alarm system. So Lauren's always like, how do we get there in the first place? Brian in our program is always about how do we, how do we make this as easy for you as possible based on what you, how you live, what you already do. And then I'll just, you know, make some suggestions and adjustments. But yeah, I think you're going to be able to take that for the rest of your life. And that goes along with the theme of if we can learn these things in mindset, body decluttering now, we're going to continue to grow younger because our bodies work so much more efficiently and effectively. That's where our fertility comes in. Uh, And yeah, I just, I always say, I just want to, I just want to create happier mamas, right? You guys get to choose if you're a mom or not. Just like you said, it's happening. Mm -hmm. I may have to give up my timing, my timeline, but it's happening. If I can just keep on creating healthier, happier mamas, and then I do the nerdy stuff, Mm -hmm. drug protocol reviews and all that boring stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's what this is about. But I have to tell you, these conversations with you that we had, uh, over lunch, right? This is what fires me up. It's not the perfect (laughs) transfer protocol or how much (laughs) gone left someone should have or not, (laughs) because ultimately I feel like that stuff is more out of my control. There's always a doctor element to it. There's always a, a different country element to it. There's always like, you know, there's always not one way to do things. But these conversations is what just give me so much energy to keep on doing what I'm doing. Well, good. Well, I am very thankful to have come across you on Facebook and listened to your podcast and then signed up. Um, But you're doing great things and helping people. And again, yeah, it's it's not just about fertility. It's so much more. It's just 
it's life. It's how to live your best life. And, and that's great. And I've, you know, gone through this program and listened to the videos like so many times and I still have work to do. Like I still haven't finished everything and all the exercises and things, um, which are great. They really make you think and really make you kind of plan and, and make me think deeper than I'm, than I'm used to. Um, and so that's why it's, it's a little bit harder for me, but it's good to make me think about those things and to go down this path and to really know exactly what I want and how I'm going to make it happen. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's just, it's just a really great program. Um, and you know, I can't, I couldn't find this, this information anywhere else and, and for everything to be right in one place. I mean, like I told you, uh, you know, I would read a book and then get so anxious and freak out about something, you know, and I love and, it. Plastic oh, is the devil. Oh, it's plastic. <laughs> I can't touch it. My son's everything is plastic. Who knew? <laughs> everything is made of plastic. I know, right? Oh God. Um, but yeah, it's just I'm so glad that I have it because it just it just made all the all those questions and those what ifs and everything in my life just kind of all right. I'm just going to send it your way or to your team's way and you guys are going to help me through it and it's going to be fine. It's not you guys doing the work. It's me doing the work, but you guys help guide me. Um, and, and that's, what's, what's really so, so great about it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much, I know I keep talking about the program and you didn't want to talk about that. No, but, um, <laughs> but uh, I but it, love it, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Right. But just, yeah, the pure amount of information and, and resources and just so many extra additional things that you can do. It's like, it's just, there's just so much to, to keep doing and keep learning and keep going over and over again and, and forgetting I've been waiting for your next podcast. Um, so I could have another thing to listen to (laughs) while I walk, but instead I'm going back through and kind of listening, you know, to things over and over and over again. So it's just constant reminders and, and you know, you, you forget things over time and kind of just, this helps you just kind of refresher, I guess, too, and, and kickstarts all those, those same thoughts again, you know, whenever you start to feel down. Cause I, I've definitely like it. Um, you know, my, I was, gosh, when I was like a month ago or so I was like on cloud. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Things are amazing. Everything is great. I'm going to be just happy forever. This is great. And I'm like, there's no way I can come down from this. And I definitely did. I, um, you know, had a little, a little just annoyance that, um, you know, that all these emotions came out and I was like, Oh, I thought I was immune to this. I thought that I couldn't feel this, but, <laughs> but no, you reminded me that no, you're going to have ups and downs, you know? And, and, um, and so, you know, I was able to work through it and, and, you know, I'm back, back up again, you know, and everything I'm, I'm, uh, back, you know, very happy again. And, but, but realizing that like, okay, whenever those come up, I know how to bring myself back out of it rather than just kind of spiral into, you know, everything sucks. Um, now I'm in the, everything is awesome phase. Yeah. And just so you know, I do the same thing. I, I go through parts of the program and our routines and what I know in waves as well, Mm -hmm. because you're like, Oh, I'm so good and healthy. And I just feel great. I'm good. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's what you should do. It shouldn't mm-hmm. constantly be the same thing, but right. inevitably things start to unravel a bit and, or, or, you know, life shit comes up and you find yourself in a pickle and then it's, and then and I immediately go to, all right, foundational stuff. Where am I at? Okay. What am I ingesting? What am I listening to? What am I allowing into my eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And I, so I do that in waves as well. I'm not mm-hmm. constantly, nothing needs to be perfect, right? I'm not yeah, constantly yeah. living at the height of, you know, where we, where we do everything perfectly, but I do know what to do to mm-hmm. quickly recover. Mm-hmm. And I can pinpoint oh, there. It's probably this, you got to start that again. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's just all about, it's all about like bumpers, you know, mm-hmm. like the bumpers on the, bowling alley that I need every time I bowl, (laughs) right? It doesn't, you you don't need to roll the bowl directly down the line, but gosh, it's nice when it swerves off and like hits something to know, okay, here, ricochet back. This is what you need to do to just keep going. It doesn't need to be perfect. doesn't need to be a strike. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Hit Mm -hmm. hit some pins, 
this week. Mm-hmm. Hit hit mm-hmm. a up in today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So tell me what about motherhood again are you excited about? Uh well, aside from the baby snuggles on my chest, which mm. was my favorite thing. Um uh you know, I'm I'm excited to share my love again. I know it's cheesy and I like I so thought this was so cheesy like before, but like I just have so much love to give. Like I love my son so much. I mean, he's almost four and makes me fucking crazy many times, but he's amazing, you know? Um, but I just have, I cannot wait to love another child and feel that love and, and give that much love to another being and have our family have that much more love in it. And my, you know, my son, he's been wanting a, a sibling for many years now and we've talked about it and in different ways. And he's going to be such a good big brother. Um, I mean, I'm sure he'll, you know, have his moments, um, of being a little jerk, but, um, but it's going to be, it's just going to be amazing to have that, that full family of, of what I want and, or of what, you know, I've, I've dreamt of with my family and just having a perfect family, I guess. And seeing my, my husband with another, another baby again, hopefully he'll be a little bit more less awkward, um, in the baby phase than he was the first time around. And he's such a great dad and so much fun and playful and goofy. I mean, he's a big kid himself. Uh, so, so it's just fun, you know, and I'm excited to have all that fun as a family and all the things we're going to do and travel and do fun things. Ah. <laughs> cheesy but uh no and all the plans they're gonna ruin when you get all ready, yeah exactly get all, all ready the, to go on a vacation then somebody yeah. gets a fever and you're like oh yeah, yeah all, all it's so things. true though but I, I love all that I love all that for you and I know and it's, I know uh, when people have not already had a child it's, it's very hard to maybe hear these conversations but take it from two people who went through secondary and you're in mommyville and you're surrounded by everybody who cannot stop getting pregnant. I know you are too, if you haven't had a child, but you're also in a, in a preschool every day and then an elementary school. And your, your son is literally the only person without a sibling mm-hmm. and you are the only person in preschool without a baby bump. Um, it's, yes. it's just constant in your face, yes. something that you can't do and they can't and your house you bought to fit all the kids right. and that big truck you bought to fit all the car seats. Yeah. It's it's haunting. Yes. 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 So absolutely. But I, all, all of those things. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I I understand those that have not had a child yet. I just, I want all those that are after number two, maybe three to just recognize we, we feel you and understand it's a different set of Mm -hmm. loneliness. Uh, Mm -hmm. and it, and it might, it's okay if not everybody understands it when it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. What last question, what is some advice you wish someone had given you on your fertility journey? Because it's made the biggest impact to your progress. Well, aside from sign up with your program, um, and go through it, you know, Uh that just to condense all of the, all of the, uh, different information from different sources, just making me crazy, you know, wondering about everything and, oh, do I have this, you know, it's the, read something and being stressed about it and and just hearing something from one person, oh, should I be doing that? Just second guessing everything, you know, mm-hmm. having one source to go to that has all resources that can, can help you, you know, I really think is, is, um, the best advice I have. It's hard. It is, it is very hard to go mm-hmm. through and, and, you know, there's, I don't know, there's not great advice other than get someone on your team, get, get a support system that can, can help you. And mm-hmm. you can ask all your crazy questions too, and, and talk about all your crazy anxieties and stresses too. And, and just have that support team, I guess. That's good. I love it. Ha- yeah. Find, find a place where there's one source for every, not just your fertility questions, but every category yeah. of your fertility questions and seemingly, right, I talk to people about career. We've talked about careers and work yeah. and what to do. Of course, relationships, of course, right. protocols, but there's just so many, it's life. Mm-hmm. It's your life. Yeah. And then there's fertility treatments and it's, and they're all connected. Everything, mm-hmm. your health, wellness, body, mind, 
everything is connected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm a uh, very grateful that I've started this program and it's, I mean, I'm going to get pregnant, but, but even just for what I've learned already, it's, it's been so worth the investment, um, in the program. And I mean, just the, the pure amount of content is phenomenal and to find, yeah, there's so many great resources and, and, and just so, so many resources and so much great information. And, you know, I can tell how much time and research and energy your whole team put into creating this program. Um, that has been, I mean, it's, it's cliche, but life-changing for me, to be honest, it's been, it's been great. And I can plan to continue to go through things and keep listening and, um, do everything I can, even, even after I have a, another baby, um, I hope to continue on this and, and I hope to have another, do another uh, podcast with you whenever I am pregnant or do have another child. So I can be a, a success story of yours. Oh, path to parenthood. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, that would be my absolute honor. I would love it. And because you live so close, I also get to snuggle with that baby. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot. I'll, I'll, you know, it's COVID days. I'll be appropriate. But. <laughs> It's a lot of smelling. I try not to like, I try not to take nibbles or bites. I just try to smell a lot and just, oh, the baby Mm -hmm. fuzz, the baby smell. Mm -hmm. Those cheeks, the feeling of their cheeks against your lip, that little, that little kiss. Oh, it's amazing. Everything is so freaking soft. Yes. I know. I know. And and their little hands, their wrinkly little old man hands and their, oh. Yes, I know. And they're a little curled up. Oh yeah, they're everything about them. Your nails like, and you're like, how is a nail that small? It's not even a, like, what is that? It's like what a is that? of rice. I know, <laughs> I know. It's so amazing. I know a lot of people don't love the new word phase and that's not my favorite phase, of course. No, I love it. I love it all. I love every phase, even, yeah, I, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. Whenever Can't wait to do it again. Talk about their, their kids and, oh, I just don't want them to grow up. I go, yes, you do because it just keeps getting better. Yeah, you thought the last phase was the greatest phase, right? It keeps getting better, (laughs) right? There's like pros and cons to every phase, you know. There's so many fun things, and there's like the annoying things, and then you know, there's oh, but the good things clearly outweigh. And then they say, "Mommy, I love you," and you know, I was like, "Oh, oh, do whatever you want. (laughs) Eat chocolate for breakfast, whatever. You don't want to brush your teeth? Fine. Who cares?" Exactly. And I think what I'm so excited about you going through, I never had this. I'm excited for you to experience motherhood with those strategies because we know how hard it is. You say how hard the newborn phase is. You will now be able to go through that knowing how to declutter mentally when that, yes. when that, those really dark thoughts come up, knowing how to restore your energy at the cellular level, mm-hmm. right? Not fully when they're a newborn. But I didn't know any of those techniques. I was just mm-hmm. going and doing and depleted and more depleted and more depleted. Mm-hmm. So I, that's what also just gets me so excited about, you know, the, I know you're going to feel such a difference doing it. Oh, just- I, I know too. I mean, yeah, just already, you know, on top of already knowing how to, you know, handle a newborn anyway, but then just everything else too. I just, you know, just the thoughts alone are just so overwhelming and just mm. consuming and so knowing how to deal with those and acknowledge and you know has been has been amazing for me so yes i'm excited good me too i'm gonna eat that ba- i mean i mean meat <laughs> i promise oh. I pro- you can have a nibble if you'd like you might. Have i'll go in the other room and yeah, and, okay. and your baby won't cry it will be very gentle okay great um <laughs> All right, my love. Well, it was so good talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is nice. And that was my mama making message for the day. For a whole series of free fertility fast tracking tools, go to mybabyiscomingsoon.com. I'm Tasha Blasi, and I cannot wait for you to meet your perfect baby that is going to come at the perfect time.